Today we are going to continue our discussion on the concept of probability in statistics. And uh, now we are going to discuss another important concept in probability, which is known as the compound probabilities. So compound probability is basically the probability in which we are going to add up or multiply the probabilities of individual outcomes. So probabilities, they may be added or multiplied, and that is known as a compound probability or a joint probability, right? And let's see how we do it. And we are going to take the example of jelly beans of different colors. And this is the same example that we took in the previous lecture. So what is the probability of uh, probability that a jelly bean will be either red or blue? So what is the event here? The event here is picking up a jelly bean randomly from this collection of jelly beans, right? And we want to calculate the probability that the jelly bean that we have picked up from this collection, it is either red or blue. So in the previous lecture, we discussed their individual probabilities that what is the probability of that jelly bean to be red, to be blue, to be yellow, or to be pink, right? But here we have a different sort of a question. So here we are talking about the probability of jelly bean to be either red or blue, right? So we are not talking about their individual probabilities. Rather, we are talking about their collective probability, their compound probability, right? So for that purpose, what we need to know is the individual probability of red and individual probability of blue. And that we had already calculated in the previous lecture. And what is the probability of red? In this specific example, it is 0.2778. And what is the probability of blue? It is 0.0833, right? So these are the individual probabilities of red and blue. And now we come to our question that what is their joint probability? What is their compound probability? And for that purpose, we are going to add their individual probabilities, right? So probability of the jelly bean to be either red or blue is 0.2778 plus 0.0833, which is equal to 0.3611, right? So here we have the compound probability, and we can say that the probability for a randomly picked up jelly bean to be either red or blue is 0.3611. So this is their compound probability. And now we take the example of the pupa that we discussed in the previous lecture, and we are going to calculate their compound probabilities. And in this case, we are going to calculate the compound probabilities of their species and sex. So as you remember from the previous um, lecture, that we had calculated their individual probabilities, right? So now we are calculating their compound probabilities. So we want to calculate the probability of male Dixella automatis. And remember from the previous lecture, what is the individual probability of male? It is 0.5. And what is the individual probability of Dixella automatis species? This is 0.8, right? So in this case, we are going to multiply their individual probabilities. That if we want to calculate the probability of the pupa to be uh, male Dixella automatis, so in this case, we are going to multiply their probabilities. And this is going to be 0.5 and multiplied by 0.8. And this is going to be equal to 0.4, right? And if you want to calculate the probability of female Dixella automatis, again, we are going to take the individual probability of the female and individual probability of Dixella automatis, which is 0.5 and 0.8. And we are going to take their uh, uh, to multiply these individual probabilities. And this is going to be 0.4. Four. So 0.4 is the probability of a randomly collected pupa to emerge as female Dixella automatis is 0.4, right? And what is the probability for male Dixella arica? And for that purpose, we need to have the probability of male and probability of Dixella arica, which is uh, 0.5 for male and 0.2 for Dixella arica, and this is equal to 1. And if, the, if we multiply these individual probabilities, this is equal to one. So this is their compound probability. And if we want to calculate the probability of female Dixella arica, so this is going to be 0.5, which is the probability for female multiplied by 0.2, which is the probability for species Dixella arica. 
and this is going to be equal to 0.1. So 0.1 is the probability that the pupa that we have randomly collected from the pond, it is going to emerge as female Pixella arica. And when we take their total probability, this is equal to 1, right? So the probability of male Dixella automalis, which is 0.4, plus probability of female Dixella automalis, which is 0.4, the probability of male Dixella arica, which is 0.1, and probability of female Dixella arica, which is also 1. So when we take their sum, the sum is equal to 1, right? So in case of compound probabilities as well, that when we have the compound probabilities, um, or the all the possible compound probabilities and when we take their sum so that should be equal to one and here is their probability distribution so we have the probability distribution of species and sets of pupae then when we are taking these two traits together right so we are talking about the compound probabilities and we can see that this is their uh, probability distribution table and now we take the example of dais that um, how we can understand this concept of compound probabilities by taking this example. So suppose we want to find out the probability of dice roll to be even, right? So how many even numbers are there in the dice? So numbers are from one to six. So how many are the even numbers? The even numbers are three. So this is going to be three out of six, which is 0.5. Or in other words, we can say that this is the compound probability of 2, 4, and 6, which are the even numbers present in the uh, present on the dice, right? So how many even numbers do we have? We have 3. And what are these 3 even numbers? These are 2, 4, and 6. So we are going to sum uh, their individual probabilities, which are 0.1667, 0.1667, plus 1 point, 0.1667, and this is equal to 0.5, right? So here we have uh, calculated their compound or joint probability, which is three by six to my, uh, and which is equal to 0.5, right? Now we want to calculate the probability of dice to be four or less, right? That what is the probability when we have an event of dice rolling? And we want to find out that what is the probability that the outcome of this dice rolling could be a number of four or less. Right. So in this case, how many uh, numbers are four or less? So this is four itself and then three, two and one. So here we have four numbers which are either four or less than four. So this is going to be their joint probability, a compound probability of four, three, two and one. And we are going to take their sum and this is equal to 0.67. So we can say that in the single event of dice rolling, the probability of dice to be four or less is 0.67, right? Now we take another example, and this is uh, the example in which we are talking about two consecutive dice rolls. So in the previous two examples, we were talking about a single dice roll, uh, but here we are talking about two consecutive dice rolls. And we want to calculate the probability of six in two consecutive dice rolls. So for that purpose, what we are going to do is we are we need to know the individual probability of six in a single event of dice rolling. And the probability of six in the single second event of dice rolling. So we have probability of six in the first event of dice roll, and we are going to multiply that with the probability of six in the second event of dice roll. So this is going to be 0.1667 multiplied by 0.1667, and this is equal to 0 0.0278. So 0 0.2078 uh, is the probability of six, right? In the two consecutive events of dice rolling. So here we have the example of dice. And now we are coming back to our example of the jelly beans that we have in a jar, 10 red jelly beans, nine yellow jelly beans, three blue jelly beans, and 14 pink jelly beans. And these are their individual probabilities within that jar and what is the probability of picking up either blue or pink and for that purpose as we discussed in the previous slide that we need to um, add their probabilities so this is going to be probability of blue plus probability of pink 
and this is going to be 0 0.0833 plus 0 0.3889, which is equal to 0 0.4722, right? So this is their compound probability. The compound probability of the jelly bean to be either pink or blue, right? And we have a slightly different scenario here. And in this case, we are talking about the probability of first two beans picked up to be red, right? In this case, we are going to multiply their individual probabilities. So probability of first bean to be red multiplied by probability of second bean to be red. And in this case, this is going to be 0 0.2778 multiplied by 0 0.2778, and this is equal to 0 0.0772. So the probability of uh, two consecutive jelly beans to be picked up as red is 0 0.0722. So probability of picking up one jelly bean to be red is 0.2778. But when we take the compound probability of two consecutive events of picking up a red jelly bean, so that is going to be less, and this is going to be 0 0.0772, right? So this is the concept of compound probability. Now, you would be rightly confused that at some places, we are adding up the probabilities, and at some places, we are multiplying the probabilities, right? So uh, now I'm going to tell you a quick tip that how you should uh, identify that which probabilities are to be added, at, added up and which are the scenarios in which probabilities have to be multiplied, right? And here is that quick tip. And for the, this purpose, you need to understand this flow chart and if we are talking about two or more consecutive events, we are going to multiply their probabilities, right? For example, the probability of first two beans picked up to be red are two events that we are talking about. We are talking about first event of picking up a red jelly bean, and then we are talking about the second event of picking up a second jelly bean. So here we are talking about two consecutive events. And in that case, for one event is going to be picking up first bean, and the second event is going to be picking up second bean. So these are two consecutive events. And when we have two or more consecutive events and we want to uh, find out their compound probability, so in that case, we are going to multiply their probabilities. So this is a quick tip to remember that when, when you have two or more consecutive events, you are going to multiply the individual probabilities. And if you have one event, then it could be two possibilities, right? And the first possibility is that the nature of outcome is one. So if the nature of outcome is one, you are going to add those uh, individual probabilities. Like in the same example of the jelly beans, that what is the probability of picking up either blue or pink in a single event of picking up a single bean. The nature of outcome is one, which is color of the jelly beans. So in this case, we are not talking about two events, right? We are talking about a single event, and we are going to pick up a single jelly bean, right? But in this case, we want to know the compound probability of two colors, right? That what is the compound probability of these two outcomes? So what is the nature of these two outcomes? Are these the same type of the outcome or are they different types of the outcome? So we can see that they are the same type of the outcome, right? That they both are the colors, right? So we have the same type, same nature of the outcome. So therefore we are going to add their individual probabilities, right? So here we are talking about a single event and we are talking about the nature of the outcome, that if the nature of the outcome is same, then we are going to add up their probabilities. And what is the second scenario in case of one event? Then when we are talking about one event, but the nature of outcomes is also different, right? So if the nature of outcomes is two, we are going to multiply them. Like the probability of a single pupa to emerge as female Dixella automalis in a single event of pupa hatching, right? So in this case, what is the nature of outcome? Is this the same or different? No, we are talking about two types of the outcomes and these outcomes are different in their nature. One outcome, it belongs to the probability distribution of species 
and one outcome belongs to the probability distribution of sex, right? So these two are different uh, types of the outcomes and therefore we are going to multiply their probabilities, right? So in this case, we are going to multiply because these are two different outcomes, species and sex, right? So this is the quick tip that how you can identify that you have to add the probabilities or you have to multiply the probabilities in order to calculate the compound or joint probability, right? So I'm going to repeat this again, that if you have two or more consecutive events, then you're going to multiply, right? But if you have one event, then it depends on the type of the outcome, that if the outcome nature is same, if the outcome belongs to the same probability distribution, then you're going to add up. And if the outcome is different, the nature of outcome is different, and it belongs to two different probability distributions, then you're going to multiply them. Like in the case of pupa, that we had two types of the outcomes, the and they belong to two different probability distributions, like female and the species, right? So that is why we are going to multiply them. So I hope this concept is clear now that where we have to multiply the probabilities and where we have to add up the probabilities in order to have the compound probability. And here uh, for your understanding, I have drawn a comparison between simple and compound probabilities. So probability could be either simple probability or a compound probability, right? So in case of single probability, we talk about a single event. And in compound probability, we either talk about two or more consecutive events, or we talk about a single event, right? So in simple probability, where we have only one event, there is no need to multiply or add because we are talking about only a single event and a single outcome. And this is going to be a simple probability. So there is no need to multiply or add, right? But in case of compound probability, we have two options. One is there are two or more consecutive events or we have a single event. So if we have two or more consecutive events, then we are going to multiply them straight away, right? So if you have two or more consecutive events, we are going to multiply the probabilities of the individual outcomes, individual events, right? But if we have a single event, then we can have the nature of outcome as one or the nature of outcome as two, right? So here we are talking about a single event and we want to calculate the compound probability of two out comes. But if those two outcomes, they belong to the similar probability distribution, they, they are of the same type, or if they are of different types, they belong to two different probability distributions, right? So if they belong to a single probability distributions that they are of same type, then we are going to add their individual probabilities. But if they belong to two different probability distributions and their nature of the outcome is different, then we are going to multiply, right? So in simple probability, we don't need any addition or multiplication because we're talking about a single event and a single outcome. But in case of compound probability, we have to decide that either we have to multiply or we have to add the individual probabilities. And that depends on the number of the events and the number of the nature of the outcomes. So here is a simple comparison of the compound and simple probabilities. Now, having talked about the simple and the compound probabilities, so here we have another example, and this example is from biology, in which we are talking about the compound probabilities. So we are talking about a trait which is biallelic. Biallelic means that it has two alleles. One of these alleles is dominant and the other allele is recessive. The dominant allele is represented by the capital letter A and the recessive allele is represented by the small letter A. So this is a simple example from basic biology that we have a biallelic trait with one dominant allele and one recessive allele. And we have a cross of two individuals one of these individuals is homozygous for the dominant allele and one of the individuals is homozygous for the recessive allele. So they are going to produce a single type of the offspring. All of them are going to be 
heterozygous, right? So all of them are heterozygous. They all have a single copy of the dominant allele and a single copy of the recessive allele. So this is going to be their offspring. Now consider the cross of these two heterozygous individuals, right? Two heterozygous individuals, each one of them has uh, one copy of the dominant allele and one copy of the recessive allele. So the expected genotype frequency in that case is one uh, individual with the homozygous dominant allele, two individuals who are heterozygous, and one individual who is homozygous for the recessive allele. So this is their expected genotype frequency, which is 1 is to 2 is to 1. Now, what are their probabilities? So probability for the offspring to be homozygous dominant is 1 out of 4. The probability for individual to be heterozygous is 2 out of 4. And probability of individual to be homozygous recessive is 1 out of 4. So the probability for the homozygous dominant is 0.25. Probability for heterozygous is 0.5. And probability for homozygous recessive is 0.25. So this is basic uh, genetics, this is basic biology that we all well know of, right? So this is well known to all of us, and this is just a recap to understand the concept of probability in this case, right? So we have calculated the genotype, uh, the probability of the genotypes for all the individual possible genotypes. Now, uh, we take the example of the same cross that we had discussed in the previous slide. So we have the cross of two heterozygous individuals, and we have calculated the individual probabilities of all the three possible genotypes of that cross, right? Now we want to answer some simple questions. Now we want to calculate the some probabilities out of that cross. So the first question is, that what is the probability that first child is homozygous dominant? We want to find out that what is the probability that first child is homozygous dominant? And the second question is, what is the probability that second child is heterozygous? The third question is, what is the probability that first two children are homozygous recessive? Then the question is, what is the probability that second and third children are heterozygous? What is the probability that first child is female heterozygous? So we have these different questions and there is another question. What is the probability that a child is either homozygous dominant or recessive? So these are how many questions? These are the six questions that we need to answer. And all these six questions, they are talking about calculation of probability of something, probability of different events, right? Now we are going to answer these questions one by one, and we are going to take the same example, the cross of two heterozygous individuals. Now coming to our first question, which is the probability of first child to be homozygous dominant. So probability of first child to be homozygous dominant is probability of the AA genotype, which is the homozygous dominant genotype. And we know from the cross that this probability is 0.25. So we are going to answer this question as the probability of the first child to be homozygous dominant is 0.25. So now we have the second question, which is what is the probability that second child is heterozygous? So in this case, we are going to take the probability of second child to be heterozygous, and we are going to take the probability of the heterozygous genotype which is 0.5. So we can say that the probability for second child to be heterozygous is 0.5, right? So here we have calculated these probabilities and you can see that these are the simple probabilities in which we don't have added or multiplied um, any individual properties, uh, probabilities, rather we have taken their individual probabilities as such because these are the examples of the simple probability in which we are talking about a single event and a single type of the outcome. Now we have our third question, which is what is the probability that first two children are homozygous recessive? Now here in this question, is this a simple probability or a compound probability? 
this is a compound probability because here we are talking about two events, right? And um, remember that we learned from the example of Dexella and the jelly beans that if we are talking about the two consecutive events, what we are going to do with them, we are going to take the individual probabilities and we are going to multiply those individual probabilities. So here we have the outcome, which is homozygous recessive, but we are talking about two consecutive events. So therefore, we are going to take their individual probabilities and we are going to multiply those individual probabilities. So the probability of first two children to be homozygous recessive is equal to the probability of first child to be homozygous recessive multiplied by probability of second child to be homozygous recessive, right? So which means that this is the probability of the small a, small a genotype multiplied by probability of small a, small a genotype. So this is going to be 0.25 multiplied by 0.25 and this is equal to 0 0.0625. So the answer to this question is that the probability that first two children are homozygous recessive is 0 0.0625. So this is our third question in which we have used the principle of compound probability and because we are talking about two consecutive events, so therefore we have multiplied their individual probabilities. And now we talk about the probability, um, uh, our next question in probability, that what is the probability that second and third children are heterozygous? So here, how many events are we talking about? Again, we are talking about two consecutive events, the second and the third birth, right? And the outcome that we are interested in is the heterozygous genotype. So we are going to uh, calculate the probability of second and third children to be heterozygous. And for that purpose, we need to know the probability of the child to be heterozygous. And we are going to multiply these probabilities. So probability of second child to be heterozygous multiplied by probability of third child to be heterozygous. So this is the multiplication of the probability of heterozygous genotypes. And we know that this probability is 0 0.5. So 0 0.5 multiplied by 0 0.5. And the answer is 0 0.25. So the probability of second and third children to be heterozygous is 0 0.25. Now we have our next question, which is what is the probability that first child is female heterozygous? And in this case, we have a single event that we have, we are talking about a single child, a single child birth. But what is the type of the outcome? What is the nature of the outcome? We are talking about two different outcomes. One is the female and the other one is the genotype, right? So we are talking about the genotype and gender in this case. So we are going to uh, have a compound probability. So we are going to have a, uh, we are going to add up the probabilities or we are we going to multiply the probabilities? Because here we are talking about a single event, but the types of the outcomes are different. So therefore we are going to multiply that, right? So the probability of female is going to be multiplied by probability of heterozygous. So the probability of the female is 0.5 and the probability of AA, which is the heterozygous genotype, is 0.5. So we are going to have 0.25. So the probability that first child is female heterozygous is 0.25. And here we have our last question, which is, what is the probability that a child is either homozygous dominant or recessive? Now here in this case, we are talking about a single event. We are talking about a single child birth, right? But the types of the outcomes are two or one. The types of the outcomes are two, but their nature is same, right? We are talking about their genotypes, right? So they belong to the same uh, probability distribution that we are talking about only their genotypes. So the nature of the outcome is one. So probability of a child to be either homozygous dominant or recessive is going to be the probability of a child to be homozygous dominant plus probability of a child to be homozygous recessive, right? Although these are two uh, different genotypes, but because 
they are the nature of the outcome is same they belong to the same probability distribution so therefore we are going to add up these probabilities so the probability of the uh, aa genotype the homozygous dominant genotype and probability of the homozygous recessive genotype so this is going to be 0.25 plus 0.25 which is equal to 0.5 so this is the probability that a child is either homozygous dominant or recessive and this is equal to 0.5 right so this is the concept of compound probability and now we are going to discuss another important concept in probability uh, which is known as the critical probability and this concept is very critical in inferential statistics right so you need to learn this concept very carefully and this critical probability is the probability below which the stated outcome of an event is unlikely to occur right and this is uh, decided arbitrarily that is there is no um, mathematical basis or there is no a statistical basis on which level we need to decide below which we are going to say that this is a critical probability or above which we can say that this is not a crit critical probability so this has been decided arbitrarily by researchers all over the world and now we are going to discuss that what is meant by this critical probability so we are going to take the example of the pieces that we took in the previous lecture and suppose uh, that a sample of female dexella attica is required for a museum perhaps right so how this sample could be collected because it is hard to um, catch the flying insects so therefore the best strategy is to collect pupa and when the fly emerges out of that pupa then that fly could be captured and can, could be preserved for the museum right or for any kind of the research that you want so for that purpose the entomologist is going to visit the pond to collect the pupa now what would be the response of entomologist if in the first scenario the first pupa to emerge is a female dixella erica right so what we are talking about is that a sample of the female dixella erica is required and for that purpose an entomologist is going to visit the pond and the entomologist has collected some pupa now we are talking about the response of the entomologist that what is going to be the response of entomologist if the first pupa that emerges out to be a fly so that pupa emerges out as female dexella erica and then the second situation is that what would be the response of entomologist if the first two pupae are going to emerge as female dexella erica and what is going to be the response of entomologists if the first three pupae are going to be female dexella attica, right? Now, this is the point of concern. Why? Because for that purpose, we need to talk about their probabilities. So the probability for the first case is 0.1. As we discussed in the compound probability, that what is the probability of female dexella attica? This is 0.5 for female multiplied by 0.2 for dexella attica. So the, their compound probability is 0.1. So probability in uh, first scenario is 0.1, right? Which is surprising or no? Which is not that surprising. And uh, we need to calculate the probability of the second possibility that the first two pi, pu, two pupae to emerge are fem, female dexella attica so in this case we are going to multiply their probabilities because we are talking about two consecutive events so their compound probability is 0 0.01 and what is the probability of the first three pupae to emerge as female dexella attica so this prob uh, probability is 0.1 multiplied by 0.1 multiplied by 0.1 because we are talking about three consecutive events. So this probability is 0 0.001, right? So what is the response of entomologist going to be for the first case? It is going to be quite normal because the chances for this to occur are 10 in 100, right? So 0 0.1 means 10 in 100. So this is quite likely to occur but chances for the second case are one in hundred right so one in hundred means that this is quite a rare thing so entomologists would be surprised that 
this is something which was unlikely to occur, but this thing has occurred anyhow. And when the entomologist is going to see that the third pupae is also emerging as female Dixella arica, so this is going to be um, shocking for the entomologist because the chances for this thing to happen are only one in 1000. The probability is 0 0.001. So this is going to be something really shocking, right? So here we have the concept of critical probability that we have to decide a level below which we say that if something which has a probability less than this is going to happen, then this is said to be a critical probability. So we have to decide some level of critical probability below which we can say that this event is unlikely to occur. Because remember, that what is the range of the probability? What is the total scale? The scale is from 0 to 1. So the closer we are to 0, the impossibility is increasing. And closer we are to 1, the possibilities are increasing, right? So the probability is decreasing as we move towards 0, and the probability increases as we move towards 1. But there should be a point on this scale where we should decide that if the probability falls below this level, then this probability should be considered as critical, right? Because zero, if we have exactly zero, that is impossible, right? So that is straight away impossible. But when we say that as we move closer to zero, it is going to become rare, right? It is, it's probability is going to decrease. So we should decide a point, a threshold, which we can uh, designate as the critical probability that if the probability drops below this point towards zero, this is going to be something critical, right? So this is the concept of critical probability. Like in this example, you saw in the first scenario, the chances are 10 in 100. So this is not surprising at all. But when we go to the second chance, this is 1 in 100, which is quite surprising. And the third case is 1 in 1,000, which is more, even more surprising, right? So uh, this is the concept of critical probability that we are talking about here. So here we have the critical probability values, the thresholds that we were talking about, that we should set a threshold. And if the probability of something, a probability of an event, falls below that threshold, then we can say that this is a critical probability, right? So here we have these uh, threshold values, and these values have been decided arbitrarily by researchers all over the world, right? So the first level is probability of 0 0.05. So if the probability of something is less than 0 0.05, then that event or that outcome is known to be an unlikely event, right? So that outcome is going to be unlikely if the probability is less than 0 0.05. And if that outcome happens, then we are going to say that this is something significant. And why we're saying that this is something significant? Because the probability was very less. But even if that less probability, this event has occurred, then we are going to say that this is a significant event, right? Then we have our next level of critical probability, and this level is 0 0.01. So if the probability is less than 0 0.01, then we are going to say that that outcome is very unlikely to occur. So this is one great up, right? That we are talking about a probability which is even lower than 0 0.05. So we are going to say that this event is very unlikely to occur. And if this event occurs, this is going to be highly significant, right? And then we have the next uh, level of critical probability, the next threshold level, that if the probability is less than 0 0.001, then that outcome is said to be highly unlikely, right? And if that outcome occurs, this is said to be very highly significant, right? So why we are saying very highly significant, why we are emphasizing on this significant word so much, because the probability of that thing to occur was very critical. It was highly unlikely. And even then that event occurs, then we are going to say that this is a very highly significant event, right? 
So all the probabilities which are above 0 0.05, they are said to be likely, the outcome is said to be likely, and if that event occurs, this is said to be a non-significant event because its probability was higher. So it was expected to occur. So this is the threshold. This is the critical probability that we use in statistics, that if the probability of something, of some experiment, it falls, or some observation, it falls below 0 0.05, we are going to say that this is unlikely to occur. And then we have different stages of this unlikeliness, that the initial stage is unlikely, the next stage, if it is less than 0 0.01, it is very unlikely. And the next stage, if it is less than 0 0.001, it is highly unlikely. But if that event occurs, we say that this is significant, or it is highly significant, or it is very highly significant. So these are the levels of critical probability used in statistics.